in this video, we're going to go through list invoices. List invoices is the option that you are taken to once you have generated an invoice associated with a permanent placement, a timesheet, a charge. Um, and ultimately, list invoices will give you the means to be able to process that invoice through the creation of an invoice document, uh, the sending of that invoice document to an invoice contact as an email, and ultimately it then being posted onto an accountancy solution such as Sage or Accounts IQ. So within Generate Invoices, obviously this is the area in which it lists all of your permanent placements, your timesheets and such, and allows you to select those um, permanent placements or select those timesheets um, and generate the invoice associated with those. Um, once you've done that, you're then taken into list invoices. And list invoices is ultimately laid out in a similar manner. Obviously, this area will contain a list of the actual invoice records that have been created um, against those uh, different placements that have been made. So when in list invoices, if we just focus on the um, filtering that's available and just the, the general layout um, of this page, um, it's obviously very similar to the generate invoices page in that you have an owning company option uh, to filter on that. Um, the invoice date option by default when you're loading the list invoices page, it will load it on today's date, uh, but you do have the means to be able to backdate it uh, to view invoices that be generated against different dates um, and obviously view those from there, but we'll, we'll focus on today's date um, as there. Um, the currency um, obviously is, is an option to be able to be filtered against, same as it was against the uh, generate invoices page. Um, and posted is the option to filter on this posted column or unposted um, is, is the ability to be able to view all of the invoices that you've not posted yet um, with, with a view to obviously them, them being processed through to the likes of uh, Sage uh, or Accounts IQ. Uh, in terms of the options above, you have the means as you did within the Generate Invoices page to filter on a company. Um, so you can look up a company there and obviously once you've filtered uh, and main changes, you also have the means to be able to reset options at any time and obviously will take you back uh, as, a, as a reset um, to your original um, formatted layout of list invoices. So if I move along the different options that are available across the top here, um, first and foremost um, on selection on, of an invoice, you have the means to edit that invoice. Um, I should also highlight before I start um, editing and creating an email is that you do have an option as well to undo invoices. So you can select undo invoices and then that will essentially remove this invoice and reset it so it moves this uh, placement back into the generate invoices table. Um, so that's basically an undo option that you have available there. Uh, but now moving on to uh, how we can physically uh, process this invoice. And we'll start with um, invoice or edit invoice uh, as an option there. Um, so on selection of an invoice that you want to edit, you select the invoice and it'll open up the invoice into a new tab um, and it will display the, start with the header details of the invoice. So you have the means to be able to um, just review these. Uh, some of these are locked down, namely the company and the uh, owning company are locked down as part of the invoice record generation. Um, but you can, if you need to, um, edit the invoice contact, uh, the, invo the associated invoice address. We can enter in a PU number um, as well. Uh, the invoice date obviously is specified here and you have the means to be able to obviously make amendments to these um, if you need to. What you can also then do is click on edit invoice lines and that will take you through to the actual invoice lines of the invoice. Um, so the means to be able to edit this area is also available um, and from that you just obviously select the line that you want to edit uh, and hit edit line there and obviously you can make the necessary changes as you need to. What you can also do is obviously delete a line and also add a line as well. So if you want need to make uh, a manual adjustments uh, or manual additions to an invoice then you can do so from within this area. So if we uh, select go back to list invoices. So the next step along is to process the invoice by creating an invoice document associated to the invoice record. Uh, and for that we either select, we can select all or we can just select the individual invoices. We can do this in batch uh, or we can do it individually. Um, but we select the invoices we need, we hit create documents and then you're given the option to select an invoice template from the different invoice templates available. Um, and with not, you're going to create a Word document or a PDF document. And what we're going to do is uh, create a Word document there, and then we'll hit OK. What it will then do is create the invoice document. And you'll notice that on the right hand side here, you've got the option of edit documents or download document. So what we'll do is we'll hit edit document and then hit yes there. And 
Now this will open up the invoice document in Word Online, which gives us a sort of summarized uh, view of the invoice document, but Word Online doesn't demonstrate headers and footers very well, and that's obviously uh, the main uh, bulk of where the content can be held within an invoice in terms of how we go about creating the invoice document. So we're opening up into the uh, desktop app, so it better, better demonstrates um, how the invoice appears. And you can see there that the invoice header is obviously printed into there. The actual invoice line is the main body content of the invoice. And then the footer is obviously a calculation of the lines and the details are specified uh, within this uh, invoice template. So um, the invoice template is printed ultimately by being placed into that invoice document. And we can close that down there. And that now takes us to the stage where we can send the invoice. So in sending the invoice, ultimately, again, this can be done in batch or individually. Uh, it's been designed in the basis that you're processing these in bulk, um, but ultimately you can just select a single invoice row um, and go to invoice or email invoices. Sorry, This will launch the email form, and from there what you'll see is the um, invoice contacts email addresses being put into the to form. If you're sending in bulk you're, and you're sending it to multiple invoice contacts, you're going to see different email addresses appear in here, but ultimately uh, be assured that for every email address that you're seeing, it represents a single email that's going out the door. It's not, um, it won't be a case that the invoice contacts would see each other's email addresses. These are individual emails that go out with the, invo the associated invoice record and, do and document uh, attached to that invoice. Uh, so from here, you can select an invoice template and oh, we've got uh, an example template here that's set up there. And then basically you have the means to be able to send it. Now, if you are sending a, a timesheet invoice, then what you have is the means to attach supporting documents. So as part of creating the timesheet document, there was the option to attach supporting documents to that timesheet. And from here, if we selected yes, what that would mean is that um, any associated uh, attachments that we associated with the timesheet would also then be associated with this uh, email and, and uh, attached to this email as, well as it's being sent out. So the, the recipient would receive the invoice and the supporting documents associated to the invoice. Uh, but from here, we'll just uh, select send, and then that will process the sending of that invoice um, off, off to that invoice contact. You'll see that it, uh, it's processed in a queue. As you can see, we're, as we, we're working through the uh, different uh, stages of uh, processing these invoices, printed obviously is for the creation of the documents and sent is obviously for the sending um, of the email with the attachment. And just to demonstrate, the recipient would receive the email, um, as you can see here. So uh, the invoice attachment um, is ultimately the same invoice ID in terms of the name and convention of the document. The merge field is obviously working as expected. Um, and email is obviously received by the recipient and processed from there. Um, so moving on to the final column, and this is ultimately where this solution would be bespoke uh, to your needs, because we would then at this point integrate with your associated uh, accountancy solution. Uh, our, pr our predominant uh, solutions have been with Sage, uh, and also we've integrated with Accounts IQ, um, and ultimately with those solutions, with those integrations, um, the uh, invoice records are then posted over to those accountancy solutions, um, and then at the point of um, them being posted, the date that they were posted obviously is obviously put into this column, and that completes the workflows in terms of being printed, being sent, and obviously being posted uh, into, into the accountancy solution. So that covers all of the functionality from the list invoices page. Mm -hmm.